was granting Moses on the mountaintop, the rules and the regulations by which his people would play the game. Uh, you need to know the rules if you're going to play the game because you won't know whether or not you won or lost unless you know the rules. And Moses was gone for a while. He, it took a little while for Moses to get the rules from God. He communed on the mountain for 40 days. He was gone a month and a half almost. And, 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 and the team was left in the valley while Moses and Joshua were on the mountain. See, see, they were there getting instructions from God whereby the nation would operate because if they were going to occupy and occupy the land as a place called promise, they would know, they would have to know how to work with one another. Uh, and so God granted them the Ten Commandments on the mountaintop. Uh, they communed with God. They had a good old time. You know I was like, when you have a good time on the mountain with God, uh, and, and when that service is about to end, uh, it's time to go back to where you were, and when you make your way back, you begin to hear some foolishness from afar that will kill your joy, will stunt your praise, uh, and get you thinking all the wrong thoughts. But that's what happened with Moses. The Bible says to me that Joshua began to give Moses an interrogatory. He said, I hear the sound of joy or victory in the camp. Or maybe I hear defeat in the camp. No, it actually sounds like a party. Come on, come on. And you know it's a shame when you can't tell the difference between a victory shout, a defeat wail, or a party. Right, right. Uh, it, it's a shame. And so Moses begins to make his way down the hill, and what it says is what he saw disgusted him. Uh, he had spent his time on the mountaintop communing with God and hearing what God was going to do for his people and through his people, giving the Ten Commandments to let the people know that although they were sojourning in a land that they had never been to before, that God had given the, the road map by which to successfully uh, travel through the, the mountains and the valleys uh, that were going to be before them, that God was going to be giving them uh, the instructions on how to live and love with one another, that God was giving them the instructions. Uh, Moses got to the outside of the camp. Satisfied. That's right. Um, in their deliverance, That's right. in their move from bondage to promise, in the midst of that, they conspired to go back mm -hmm. to flesh pots of their masters That's right. because they got tired of eating manna and quail. Right. Yes, yes. Godly provision they were not satisfied with. Mm -hmm. Heavenly providence they were not satisfied with. Uh, the children of Israel majored in minor. I mean, how else can I say that? <laughs> they matriculated in mess up. <laughs> they grumbled, groaned, and complained the whole time. God was in the midst of their lives delivering them. And they were kicking against God's deliverance. Well, uh, you know sometimes we get so used to our mess come on now, that when God shows us a clear path, we don't go in that direction. <laughs> that we get so, so accustomed to foolishness yeah. that when there's no foolishness, we don't know how to act. Right. Uh, we, we we're looking for the foolishness to show up because it gives us some measure of comfort. Yeah, yeah. But God doesn't want you in a comfortable place. Wow. Uh, if you're going to occupy oh, yeah. a promised land, uh, you got to be in some uncomfortable yeah. situations. Uh, you have to That's be in front of folks who don't like you, uh, who are never going to like you, yeah. who will smile in your face hey. all the while trying to take hey. your place. Hey.
mindful that if I want to get to my mountain, if I'm going to take this steep climb to my destiny, if you don't want to go with me and be a helper, I'm not going to take you with me to be a hindrance. I'm going to shake the dust off and realize that I have an appointment with my destiny. The Levites went through the camp and 3,000 lost their life on that day. Choose you this day. Who you're going to serve. If it's going to be God, then serve God. If it's going to be man, then serve man. But what God really wants to know is whose team are you on? If you're going to be on God's team, you've got to show up for practice, otherwise you won't know the plays. If you're going to be on God's team, you've got to exercise your spiritual muscles, otherwise when there is resistance and adversary, you won't have the equipping to deal with the enemy in front of us. If you're going to be on God's team, you got to put on the right equipment and wear the right uniform. I'm not talking about your gold plated cross that you wear that everybody can see. I'm talking about your blood bought life that ought to be representative of how you live day in and day out. And you're going to be on God's team. You want to have a song in your heart that has nothing to do with bumping or grinding. You want to have a song in your heart
Lord. 